Welcome, everybody. Well, it's the start of our show. Now, our first guest was an entertainment critic for WBZ in Boston from 1981 to 2008. She is well-known and well-loved. Please welcome Joyce Kilhaywick. <laughs> people in here. <laughs> well, we're Greek. We just sound louder than we are. That's pretty much. <laughs> now, let's talk. This new venture for you yes. is Joyce's Choices dot com. Let's pretty tell clever, people huh? at home what it's all about. Uh, Joyce's Choices dot com is my website, mm -hmm. and it's uh, me about uh, arts, entertainment, and life, so I get to write about anything I want. Uh, because when I was on TV, I only had about a minute and a half to say every single thing I wanted to say, so I had to talk really quickly. And now I get a lot more room to, really, to write. So mm -hmm. I do movie reviews, theater reviews, um, I talk about, you know, whatever whatever's going on, you mm -hmm. know, something, something that happens. My yoga experience last <laughs> week, which really was profound. We, so. we, uh, <laughs> I, I definitely need some yoga. My back's been bothering me. <laughs> I recommend it. We, we talked earlier about this. Now, you were on TV for so many years. Yes, and you were about 150. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah. You, you were talking about entertainment here in Boston. And we, yeah. You and I have this uh, feeling that there is a lot of entertainment here in Boston. Yeah. And we're trying to highlight it, and we love it. But uh, I was going to ask you this. You... We're on TV so much. And I said, you know, I was always wondering why there wasn't a Joyce Culhaywick column. And you told me, well, it was so busy for oh, you. I was I was jammed all the time. I mean, I had a show every single day. I was <laughs> on the 5 o'clock news, the 6 o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news. I was covering the Oscars, the Emmys, the Grammys, the traveling. I had a national show with Leonard Maltin mm -hmm. called Hot Ticket. We did movie reviews. How about that, everybody? Yeah, I worked with um, I worked with the premier TV movie critic Roger Ebert, mm -hmm. who is phenomenal. I was a co-host with him for a year, so I really had an awful lot of work to do mm -hmm. on TV, making that deadline every day, mm -hmm. and it was really. Uh, it was so intense. I thought that job would kill me the first couple of years. <laughs> really, I didn't think. And people say, oh, it must be so glamorous. You have all hair and makeup. And I said, are you kidding me? I'm lucky if I can, you know, eat a ham sandwich in the back of a moving truck while I'm getting my mascara on running down the hall. I mean, mm -hmm. I actually once fell off my chair just as I got to the set and Bob Lobel had to like vamp for a, a he's our sports caster, mm -hmm. you know, for a few minutes before I could start talking. But it was a pretty intense daily job mm -hmm. that I did for a long time. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, because my mom was a teacher, you told me that you taught English. Yes. I was an English teacher at Brookline High School mm -hmm. for about two and a half years uh, when I just got out of graduate school. And I think I knew I was in the wrong job when my first week there, somebody asked me out to the junior prom. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I'm... <sighs> I am going, but it'll be as a chaperone or something. <laughs> so, and then, you know, I, it just wasn't for me. The Everything about that job, except the material and the kids, was just not right. I just, I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I had to be up at, you know, like 6 o'clock in the morning when it was still dark in the winter time. I used to tell the kids, okay, just open your books and read for a few minutes, you know, that <laughs> kind of thing. I just, it was the paperwork, the discipline problems. It was really tough. So I just quit cold. Mm -hmm. And I just decided to start looking for anything that seemed like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I looked at was television. And I ended up hearing about an audition. And I went on this audition. And uh, you should have seen the women who showed up on this, this audition. They were tall. They were blonde. They were voluptuous. They were wearing <laughs> high heels. They had their modeling portfolios. And I had a little Peter Pan collar on and a little skirt. And I was like from, you know, from school. And I thought, well, they're never going to hire me. And then I, I, I got so nervous when they put the microphone on me. Mm -hmm. And then I forgot everything I was going to say. And I couldn't wait to get out of there. And I started to leave. And finally, the producer came over, ran over, and said, get back here. Just get rid of those cards. I think you've got something we're looking for. And I said, well, what? Amnesia? I forgot everything. <laughs> he said, no, no, just tell us about yourself. And they believe it or not, hired me. Oh, that's fantastic. In the sixth largest market in the country with no experience, no nothing, just whatever. And um, But my love was always the arts, and that's what I studied in school. Mm -hmm. uh, literature, music, 
dance, theater, all of that. Mm -hmm. This is what I believe in. This is what I eat, sleep, and drink. Mm -hmm. This is what I love. And people have loved watching you for years. How about this, everybody? <laughs> Jules Now, I'll have to tell you that uh, I do have a memory of watching you doing a movie review, and you said to me on television that I should go see the movie coming to America. And I did. I went to see <laughs> it. It was Murphy, hilarious. Yeah. And I loved it. And I always remembered, you know, Joyce Kilhaywick told me to go see that movie. <laughs> and it was great. So thank you for that. Oh, you're very, very welcome. <laughs> One of my favorite yeah. movies. And now, you are still on television because I know, flipping through the channels, I saw you as a judge on Community Auditions. Community Auditions. It was a show that was uh, used to be hosted by Dave Maynard a long time ago. Mm -hmm. If you're from the Boston area, you know that. And we've kind of revived it. And it's sort of picked up on the whole American Idol thing. So so there are now three judges. I'm the mean center judge. <laughs> uh, sometimes I say, I think I gave a five rating once to a four-year-old girl. I don't know. It was terrible. She couldn't sing. But, and I had to tell it like it was. <laughs> Uh, we do have to mention that Candy O'Terry, who was on our show, is she's also a, she's a judge, a with judge me. on that and program. And Steve Sweeney, yep. that hilarious, crazy man. And uh, yeah, a lot of people locally have shown. Ernie Bach, mm -hmm. who sells cars, yeah. he's been a judge. I could on use that a show. car. Hey, Ernie, if you're watching, he donates one of the big prizes. Actually, he, oh. a big, you know, Subaru. Oh, that's or something. my problem. Yeah. We don't offer prizes here. You got to give prizes, prizes, Steve. Well, how about the audience? Would you guys like a new car? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Just like Oprah. You're like Oprah. Yeah, but she gives a real, real, real prizes. I give away like matchbox cars. We already <laughs> tried that once. It didn't work very well. Uh, you are also a, a spokesman for the American Cancer Society, yes. right? You are three times cancer survivor. It's a miracle that I'm sitting in front of you. I am a three-time cancer survivor. <laughs> Thank you. And it's, um, I had melanoma, which is a skin cancer. It's mm -hmm. the really vicious, aggressive kind, and ovarian cancer twice. Wow. And the doctors have told me that they could count on the fingers of one hand the people who have survived those diseases in the stages in which they were for me. Mm -hmm. And my message to everybody is to challenge everything your doctors tell you. Mm -hmm. I was misdiagnosed every single time. And I, I knew I wasn't well when they told me everything was fine. So if you've got a lump or a bump or something and mm -hmm. you don't know what it is and they say, oh, wait six months and then we'll take a look at it, don't walk out of that doctor's office. Mm -hmm. Run. Find someone who's going to check that out, biopsy it, whatever. There's no downside to getting the bottom line answer. You're in charge of your, of your health. Mm -hmm. If a doctor makes a mistake, you pay the price, not mm -hmm. that doctor. So don't be afraid to challenge your doctors. And I say this to women in particular because a lot of women, you know, are very, and you can't get men to go to the doctor. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you know, I don't go. They, so. I'm fine. So, you know, when they get in there, but, but women sometimes don't ask or don't push. A good doctor welcomes questions mm -hmm. and will actually give you a recommendation for a second opinion sometimes. So I say, fight for yourself. It's your one life, own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. Now, so there. Yeah. And eat Greek yogurt. It's yeah, really good yeah. for you. We make yeah. good yogurt. What can I say? Uh, before we go, I just want to mention that you yes. have a vision for this entertainment industry in, in Boston. You do. Yes. We talked about this. And, and what do you want to say about this? Well, I, and I know that you share this idea, Steve. And that is that the reason I live in Boston is because I love this city. I could have moved to New York or L.A., which, you know, arguably is, is the place where a lot of what I'm interested in is happening. The fact of the matter is Boston is a cultural mecca. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to play second fiddle to New York City. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful city. We have world-class theater, we have world-class dance, we have world-class music, we have uh, movies that are being made on our streets, mm -hmm. we have performing artists and incredible restaurants and comedians, and this is something that needs to be broadcast to the world. Mm -hmm. Boston is known primarily as a sports town, as an academic center, mm -hmm. as a medical center. It should be known also as a cultural center. Mm -hmm. This is the good news about Boston. Uh, and this is the good news on newscasts, too. I think it's a shame that, that there is no more of what I used to cover on our newscasts. It's rapes, robberies, murders. Mm -hmm. Where's the good news? Yep. If you were to watch one of our newscasts, you'd think we were all criminals instead of people being capable of doing incredible things that uplift us all. Mm -hmm. You know, the talent the good news. The ex that's what I used to get to tell every single night. So my vision is to really draw attention globally to Boston as a world-class 
a cultural mecca mm -hmm. and get people here from every English speaking corner of the globe, mm -hmm. from Hong Kong, from Canada, from Ireland, from the UK, everywhere. A lot of places where you're broadcasting. Bucharest, Lenny Clark, <laughs> Lenny Clark said you're on hey, in Bucharest. Hey, we're now on in Slovakia! Yeah. <laughs> I'm half Polish and half Italian, so you got to get this on in Rome and in Warsaw. Listen, we're right? trying. Every week I try a new place. It's just not working as fast as I want it to, but it is happening, and we do have to say thank you, Joyce Kalea. Oh. Thank, you. thank you so much. The thank website you. is JoyceSchoices.com. We'll yes. be right back right after this. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.